welcome. Who's more nervous, you or your kids? Okay, by the chuckles, I have a feeling that that is you and not your children. And to help your children get over it, I do guarantee come May, they will be coming over with their class from their school and they will get a different type, same similar but different presentation and a tour during the school day while the students are here and they will get to see kind of a little bit a snapshot of what Fisher Middle School is like while it is in action. First and foremost, yes, I am Barbara Brower. I am the principal here. We have Ms. Dwyer, my assistant principal. There he is. Come on, come on, guys. ourselves the Fisher family all right so as of right now your children coming here welcome to the Fisher family all right your family just grew by a thousand people okay um, dinner I like chicken pizza no okay um, as members of the Fisher family we expect and that includes you the students the staff the families to be responsible and accountable all right so there's different ways we go about this and, and mostly the reason we put this up here um, is for you guys to understand that yes, we do have the whole child, all right, the whole child in mind. Not just the academic, but the behavioral, the emotional, all right, the health part of it, we do have all of that in mind. No need to fully go, all right. Challenging curriculum, high expectations, inviting supportive environment, safe environment, uh, respect and acceptance of diversity, all of that is how we try and meet that mission and be part of the Fisher family, okay? Now, usually we have our little PowerPoint slides here all printed out and we all sit down nice and good and sit there and figure who's talking where, who's talking where. Tonight we said we're gonna wink. So if we see a little, I, we shouldn't be off because we've been doing this for so many years, but if we're off, it's because we are trying to wink here a little bit. Not the presentation, but who's getting up when. So we'll go from there. So, how is sixth grade different from fifth grade, all right? It's different, but it's not, okay? And I know that's not the answer you wanna hear, all right? It's different because, yes, they are coming to the middle school. We are getting 250 students compared to close to 70 to 80 at each of the elementary schools in the grade level, okay? So all of a sudden, our class of sixth grade became 250 where your, your child is in a class of fifth graders of 80 to 90 students. So yes, that does enlarge. What we also do is we make sure that these, the students are getting a different teacher for each of their subjects. All right, and we'll get into that you know, a little bit more as we go on. Um, I believe Ms. Freeman. Good evening. Good evening. I said good evening. School hours, so this is a big difference for our middle school. Obviously, we start at 8.05, we end at 3.05. This is where it gets a little tricky. Our doors open at 8.05. The first bell rings at 8.25, and the, the policies may be a little different at the elementary le level. Your child will get marked late if they are not in their homeroom by 8.25. So during that 8.05 to 3.05 time frame, they're taking care of notes, they're going to the school store, they're going to the practice room, but it's important that your child is in their homeroom before 8.25. We also, as mentioned, have a breakfast program, 7.45 until 8.15 a.m. An extended day program is available here as well. How many of you have children who are in EDP now? Same process, if you are interested, it is still available. Schedule, <coughs> Mr. Dwyer. Good evening all, uh, my name is Mr. Dwyer. I have the privilege of working at a wonderful school. I also live in this wonderful town. My son actually is a sixth grader now, so I am currently living out all of the anxiety that you are feeling. And you're gonna make it through. I've made it through so far. There's been a couple of bumps and bruises, mostly on me and not on him. 
but it is, uh, we have a great school here. We like to offer support. Part of that support comes with our schedule. So I want to go over a couple of the features. Every day your, your son or daughter will start with homeroom, our pledge, our announcements. So that is a feature that we offer. Something that the students love, I, I should say about 85% of the students, we have a daily physical education class. So they love that, 41 minutes every single day. Uh, one of the marking periods will be a health class. What's important for you to know, uh, students, this is one of their hard parts, kind of the anxiety part for the students. They will need a change out of the clothes they come into, into the PE uniform, which is very loose. The teachers will go over that with the students. But that is a little bit of anxiousness for the students. So if you can help them with that, let them know everyone will be doing it. There will be a locker that they will secure their items in. Help them by getting a combination locker over the summer. Not a padlock with a key, but a combination locker, the old master lock. Turn to the right, turn to the left, back to the right. That will help them with their PE locker, also with their school locker. So that is a word of advice as a current sixth grade parent. Another feature is that we have daily enrichment classes with an alternate. So every day your student, your son or daughter will have an enrichment class. The next day of school, they'll have a different class, exposing them to upwards of four different enrichments throughout the year. There's grade level lunches, so we want to make sure you know your son or daughter will only be eating lunch with sixth graders. That is usually a bit of anxiousness for parents. They will only eat lunch with sixth graders. For the most part, and if you're inter interested in attending the tour at the end, we'll have a tour. You'll see that for the most part, their classes are all in our sixth grade wing. Uh, the seventh and eighth grade are all in this part of the world. Sixth grade, for the most part, is down in our sixth grade wing. <coughs> we have a block schedule. This, we've done this now for, I think this is our third year, and it's been a great transition. So every day, your son or daughter will have three core classes. For the year, they will attend a math class, a language arts class, and then they'll have science or social studies first semester, and then whatever they did not have the first semester, they'll have science or social studies the second semester, which is a little bit like the elementary school, except they do it by quarter. Uh, but they will be there for a full 83 minutes of math, a full 83 minutes of language arts, and then a full 83 minutes of social studies or science. I'm going to show you a sample schedule a little bit later, but it is a block schedule. The kids have really adjusted well to this. It allows them to do a lot more activities within the class and for the teachers to uh, really do some great um, extended activities within the class. One of the things that the students really like, and I encourage you, I beg of you, please, your son or daughter will come home when they visit us with a selection form for their enrichments. Please sit down with them, help them do that form, because I love, as best as we can, for your children to choose the enrichments they want. Because I understand that one student might really love art courses, while another student, it's not their thing. And that's okay. We're all made uniquely, and that's a wonderful thing. So we want to provide an opportunity for your son or daughter to explore some enrichments and to get into what they want to get into. I hate when I have to pick enrichments for a student. And that's what happens after I beg and plead to get the form back. I basically sit during the summer and I find out what courses have openings, and I'll take student A, fill out the form, student B, but that's really not what I want to do. I want your son or daughter to do and pick what they want. So please help them with that. Another great thing our schedule does, it provides support within the schedule for students who are struggling. Uh, we have something called a tier two class. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Tier three, uh, that is, again, extra attention in a smaller group setting for any student who is struggling, especially in the area of language arts or math. I believe the next slide is a mock schedule. This is student John Smith, and you'll see, as I said, the first thing on their schedule is their homeroom. The bell will ring. They're going to stay right where they are because their homeroom <laughs> is their first period class. This student, you'll see it says ELA. That's going to be English language arts. 
and they're in humanities. We do feature a humanities program for English language arts. That would be translated from the ACE of elementary school. We also have a GMT math program. That's the AIM, referred to as the AIM in elementary school. So for John, first period and second period, full uninterrupted, 83 minutes straight, he's with his teacher for English language arts and humanities. A bell will ring, period three, and John is going to physical education. So he has a morning physical education. Some of his peers will have physical education in the afternoon, while John, you'll see in the afternoon, has his enrichment. So we kind of divide things up that way. But period three is his PE. Then in sixth grade, period four comes around, he's gonna go to math. He's in a regular math class. He's only in our humanities class for language arts, but he's not as strong in math, and that's why he's in his regular math class. That's period four. You'll notice that's an interrupted block of time by lunch. So two of the blocks of our classes will be uninterrupted. One will be, be interrupted. This one is by lunch. So the lunch time for sixth grade, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe is 11.30. 11.30 is lunch for sixth grade. Pretty decent time. After lunch, John is going to return back to his math class for the second half. An additional 41 minutes of math. Bell will ring. John, for first semester, you'll see that he's going to social studies. He will have that again for a full 83 minutes. Bell will ring again. He's going to go, as I said, John struggles a little bit with math. So you'll see that he is going to tier three math. Every other day, he's going to receive an, an additional 41 minutes of math in a group no bigger than eight students to help him bridge some of the shortcomings he has in math. The other day, that's his B day, his A day, I should have said first, he's going to band. He's a band student. He'll have band for the full year. And then the bell will ring, and he will end his day and head to his buses or head to the front door to meet the ride. Now, second semester, you'll see that he transitioned into science, and he also transitioned into his second round of enrichments. But we'll move on. Our next slide, we'll see what? No, for Ms. Freeman. Oh, okay, Ms. Freeman. In fact. Changing classes, major difference between the elementary to the middle school, but there's some relief. Their classrooms are literally in the same hallway. The only time that your child would have to leave their designated area is to come over here to the gymnasium or go to some of their enrichment classes, which is in this hallway right here. But for the most part, most of their class literally consists of this door to this door. Got it? <laughs> One of the biggest fears I know that people have is the intermixing of the six, the seven. Dwyer's already pointed out, the sixth grade is pretty much, as you all came in that front, sixth grade is pretty much to the left. So seventh and eighth grade is to the right. Is there some enrichment classes up here? Yes, there are. But really the only place sixth graders are intermixing with the seventh and eighth is probably on the buses. All right, and for that 31 <coughs> minutes of possibly moving through the hallways. All right, so what we try and do <coughs> is we try to provide opportunities uh, to build academic strength, to develop social skills, nurture emotional growth, and instill responsibility. All right, so all of that um, is going on every day in the <coughs> course of curriculum. Certainly helps build the academic strength, uh, social skills in a little bit. Uh, Ms. Cinderella will get up. She can talk about lunch punches. She can talk about the yeah, groups yeah. and such that we have uh, and go from there and, yeah. and instilling some of the responsibilities. Yeah. All right, our curriculum no different than any other curriculum that you have, that your child has already had in elementary school, will have in high school, will have in college, whatever it may be. As you can see, our core classes, and Mr. Dwyer already touched on this, we have a language arts, right? we have a mathematics. Language arts, for those of you back in the day that said you came here for junior high, that's your reading and writing class. We've now combined them to call them English language arts, all right? Um, we have the mathematics. And we call it honors, not aim. We call it humanities, not ace. Okay? Um, science, social studies, and physical education. Those are the core courses. All right? These are all which eventually lead them to high school that are requirements for graduation. And yes, physical education, not necessarily from here, but at the high school, is a requirement for the graduation. We 
which is part of the reason why we continue to make sure that it is a daily class, let alone we know that 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds, they need to get some energy out at some point, and we do not have recess. This block schedule doesn't allow for a recess. Right? So the daily physical education is where we are helping them to get rid of some of that excess energy. So what you see is a, I'm, I'm very proud of this slide. This is a slide of all of our current enrichment offerings. When I started here 10 years ago, sixth graders were exposed to, I believe, five enrichments. There was no choice for them. They would rotate through every 20 weeks or 10 weeks, something like that. And I already mentioned that now they have freedom of choice. I will be honest and say there are some requirements. The state of New Jersey says that every student, every year, needs to select a foreign language. So we still want to provide choice. The choice is either French or Spanish. But that is a requirement by the state of New Jersey. So it will definitely one of the enrichments that your son or daughter is going to be taking. But you'll see, if you look at sixth grade, there's a lot of different opportunities musically, artistically. Uh, we want to even expand within our technology. And we're constantly looking at different courses to continue to add to this list. And we included seventh and eighth grade because, again, we're excited. We want students to know, yeah, in seventh grade, there's robotics. There's ceramics. There's some unique things that I'll be honest, there's not a lot of middle schools in the state that offer this rich of a selection. If you find one, let me know because I'll copy off what they're doing and I'll expand it even more. Uh, so, but we are excited by what we are offering. So again, please make sure you help your son or daughter select their enrichments. Next up, Ms. Brower already uh, mentioned <coughs> we are a school. We desire for students to achieve we require and expect high academic standards. If your son or daughter is planning on competing in sports, an average of a 70 is required. Everyone is eligible, as long as they are promoted from fifth grade, to participate in fall sports. Mr. Bonner, I believe, will go over a little bit more of our sports schedule, so he will cover that. As I mentioned earlier, we do have honors math in every single grade. We have honors English language arts. We call it humanities. And there, of course, we have a required summer and math packet. I do see a question. I will take it. Just real quick, back to the previous slide. Yes, sir. How many enrichments did you take? Thank you. It's a trick question. I mean, trick answer. <laughs> if your son or daughter is in band or orchestra, that fills two slots, but each student gets four slots to fill, okay? So band or orchestra is a full year course, so they will have it every A day in the morning, first semester and second semester, giving them still two more slots. I already told you, unfortunately, one has to be a world language, so that's three slots of four filled, okay? But they still need to, on their form, place band, place their language choice and things like that. Okay, but thank you for that question. Very good. What's next? <coughs> okay, good evening. Um, this year, um, when they come into school next year, they will get to eat lunch with their friends. Uh, we have two cafeterias here, call them Cafe A and Cafe B, and they're dedicated to the separate teams. Um, they can sit wherever they want in that cafeteria with their friends. It just one cafeteria is going to be dedicated to the one team and the other to the other. Um, money may be kept on an account. We have there's more choices. That's going to be one difference between the elementary level. Um, their pin number will remain the same. And we have on Wednesdays uh, with earning earning slots to enjoy some activities like going out to Ryan's Garden when the weather gets nice, um, or participating in basketball in the gym or to the uh, a room where they can uh, play with their electronics and things like that. So there's many different um, incentives for their behavior that they can do on Wednesdays. And what that looks like is they would come in, that, that pass gives them front of the line access, and then at about 15 minutes when they're done eating their lunch, they can choose one of the activity rooms that their pass has earned them. And you should know your money, anything left over on your account from fifth grade will transfer over to Physical education, as um, Ms. Brower, Mrs. Brower mentioned earlier, that it is a change every day. 
physical education. It's very simple, uh, black or gray shirt, um, sneakers, athletic shorts or pants. Um, it's, they cannot use the classroom attire that they came to school with. Um, you will, they will need to get a combination lock and bring that in and that will be, their, their lock space will be issued by the physical education teachers, but they will need to bring their own combination lock. And we like to have them change their clothing at least once at the end of the week, okay? So, <laughs> always prepared. Next being demos. Yeah. <laughs> at this time, I'm gonna introduce our guidance department, Mrs. Jen Citarella, and I will come back to talk to you about extracurricular activities. Okay, um, I'm Jen, I am the sixth grade counselor this year. Um, the guidance department is really no different than the guidance that they have now. The only minor difference is we don't really go into the classroom as much as we do character education. Um, a lot of what we do is the child coming to the guidance counselor and doing a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. In terms of groups, we do um, a lot of lunch lunches. This way we're not taking them out of their academics. Um, we do a lot of mediations. There's, this is the age where the students or the kids are you know, making new friends. Hormones are raging and everyone's up in the air or who likes who. So we have a lot of the kids come in and we talk to them and, and really work with them to learn how to work it out on their own for future issues that are um, similar. Um, the guidance department also works very closely with the teachers. If there's an issue um, either at home, if there's an academic issue, um, a lot of times the teachers will come to us and say, you know, Johnny's grades have been going down. Is something going on at home that we don't know about? Or Now, just so you know, there is a lot of information that we cannot share with the teachers that's confidential. So I just want you to be aware that everything the child tells us or the parent tells us that we cannot go back and tell the teacher and certain staff members. Um, we give advice, so that goes along with mediation, with talking to the child. Um, the crisis intervention, so a lot of times the parents will call us and say, you know, someone's grandparent died or a pet died or, or something really traumatic may have happened. So really actually do appreciate parents calling us because sometimes the child will come in and they will will act different or they will be angry and no one knows what's going on so it to have the parent counselor or parent teacher communication is very helpful so we can have a heads up and really work with the child to help them get through the day or the week. Um, next slide. <coughs> organization and success. Um, so really is different in terms in, in the sense that every night that they will get homework they change classes so they really do need to be on top of their game when it comes to um, being organized and keeping everything um, together so we, we stress they're going to get an agenda book which is like a little calendar book so each day they have each section each academic section they'll have a place to write their homework we really encourage them using that bringing it home the parents checking it and making sure everything have a homework website, I'm sorry, each, each team has a homework website. So the parent always has access to know what the child or the student, what homework they have that night. Um, sometimes sixth graders come in, which this year it hasn't been a problem, but their lockers get a little messy. They'll just cram papers in. Um, the teachers do try to have clean outs a couple of times a year, um, but we encourage the parents to say, you know, bring everything home from your locker so we can see what's in it. Sometimes I'll have to go down there and check it to make sure that it's cleaned out not a mess. Um, I encourage that as soon as the child gets home from school to do the homework right away. This way they can have free time, they can, you know, after the homework, they can just do what they want to do and relax. And we say that to, if you're getting a big project, because usually the teacher will let the student know that there's a project coming up or, you know, the, the, main, the total project to do on this date. So we say, you know, every day a little, do a little piece of it because we don't want to wait until the last minute to have always prepare the night before. Sometimes students miss their homework because they forgot to put it, their homework in their book bag. So we say for the parents and the students to check the, home, the book bag the night before, make sure everything's in it, have a homework folder where all the homework goes in it, um, and just to make sure that everything is prepared for the next day so you're not running out. Um, every night you're going to get the student will mainly get homework. Um, we say that don't let them do it more than two hours. If they're getting frustrated or something wrong, you can always email the teacher and let them know that, hey, my child's having problems with this, you know, it was over a certain amount of time. 
the, is the home, the online homework center, which I told you about in the previous slide. Also, we have a link where parents can every day go on to, well, once a week the teacher updates um, the system, Genesis, and the teacher will put all of the, um, the grade or the, the pro projects or, or, or assignments they have. So you can actually go in and see what the grade that they received, if they completed, if they didn't complete it, um, if they got half credit, and sometimes the teachers will also provide a little note stating why they received a certain point and why they didn't. Um, the homework page, uh, I'm going to show you guys a little bit later, I'll show you the website, show you actually what the homework page looks like. Now, common concerns of the student's transition, I should say common concerns of the parents as to his transition. Now, actually some of these are also concerns of the students as well. Finding their way around. You drove up to this building, some of you have been in this building, it's huge, and it got larger. All right, as time is going on, we've added a whole D wing. We, the portable wing is now not portable anymore. It's solid, so that's now our E wing, everything else. So things have definitely expanded. Different is you do not need to get from point A to point B in three minutes and being told not to run to be able to do it. All right, so getting around, Ms. Freeman already addressed it. I'm going from math to language arts. Oh, let me go from here to here. It's two doors down. That's it, all right? The first day, even though we are gonna have the students here in May and give them a tour, they're listening to us, but they're not listening to us. They're looking while they're taking the tour, but they're looking for their brother, their cousin, their friends, whatever it may be. They're not looking for that this is the A wing, this is the D wing, this is where enrichments are. So we know it, we get it. So the first day, sixth grade teachers, really the first day in September that they come to school, they really are getting another orientation, all right, with that. The teacher's actually walking them right through the schedule, all right? <clears throat> so we go from there. Lots of combinations and issues. Um, I believe there's only one, uh, two of the elementary schools that don't. Two, I think Antile's the only one that has lockers. Antile's the only one that has lockers, so they're used to it, all right? So what freaks? There's two things that freak the sixth graders out. One, it's the lockers itself, and am I gonna have enough time? And two, am I gonna get stuffed in? Okay? I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now, in my 30 years here, and even when I was a student here, no one got stuffed in a locker. All right, the only person ever went in a locker went in willingly, and that was to take a picture for Ms. Freeman. Okay? So that is all that happened. Plus, the lockers the sixth graders are getting are half lockers. All right, so for them to fit in it, they really have to be tight. All right, which is the other reason why, when Ms. Sorrell <coughs> said, get those lockers cleaned out. All right, you'll find about three winter jackets, not that we needed much today. You'll find probably that homework assignment that your son or daughter swears they turned in. All right, and there it is without a grade on it or anything else. So locker cleanouts are there. Mixing with the older students, I already mentioned to you basically that's on the buses and maybe for three minutes while they're walking up to an enrichment class a day. All right, that's about it. Choosing sports or clubs. This can be difficult in sixth grade. It can be difficult for the kids, can be difficult for the parents. One, difficult for the kids because they like everything they do, but they also know majority of our sports, even though we're a middle school team, majority of our sports are uh, playing other schools that are seventh and eighth graders. So can sixth graders certainly try out for the teams and make the teams? Yes, we've had, all right? But a lot of times, sometimes that extra year of growth and maturity makes a big time difference. Uh, Mr. Bonner will get to what our sports and clubs are later on, so that's not a problem there. Homework we've touched upon. They always think the teachers are tough. You probably thought the teachers were tougher. I thought the teachers were tougher. No, the work is tougher. When you get down to it, we keep building each and every year in Ewing Township with a wonderful curriculum that continues to guide as they head into the next year. So always being preparing them for the high school <coughs> graduation. All right. So it's the curriculum that gets tougher. It is the work that gets a little tougher. All right. The, unfortunately, that always gets associated back to the adults are tougher. All right. We're looking for, going back to our slides, the academic success, uh, the emotional success, every, all of that. And sometimes it does have to get a little <coughs> serious and down and dirty and saying this is what needs to happen. 
all right? So, but it's all in the end result of helping our children grow. The lunchroom has already been discussed. No classes with friends. I've only got two teams in sixth grade, all right? So there's every opportunity, the 80 kids coming from Parkway, that your son or daughter is gonna be in a class on a team with someone they know, all right? It, it, it's just general math that happens there. Uh, getting in trouble, of course, everyone's always worried about getting in trouble and they've heard all these horror stories about the ISS room, if we get suspended, if we even look at the teacher the wrong way, you know, no, it's only if you look at me the wrong way. Um, but yes, we do have a behavior guide. All of the elementary schools have a behavior guide. Does ours ramp it up a little bit and it's, it's a little bit, you know, maybe a little stiffer penalty? Yes, but we're not looking, that's not any teachers, any deans, anybody's, um, what they are out there looking for. We're looking to help the children grow to become responsible citizens. Peer pressure, Ms. Citarella already talked about how guidance will help us with that. And of course, more teachers. Figure it out, they've got their three course teachers, they've got their physical education teacher, they've got their four enrichment teachers, all right? Then they have our lovely faces down in the lunchroom, all right? So I had the four of us on there. They're all of a sudden now, they've got you know 12 names right off the bat that they've got to try and remember. Oh, and the guidance council that's go up to 13, all right? So there's all of that that's going on. So that freaks them out a little bit compared to just knowing I have Ms. Smith in front of me and the principal is Ms. Harris and I'm good to go, all right? Now there's you know a whole bunch more that they need to uh, make sure that they are taken care of. Ms. Brown, before you As move on. As it says, keep calm. We're all here to help. We'll all make it work. Before moving on, uh, I'd like to do a new slide. This is common concerns of an administrator of a Fisher Middle School student. <laughs> So my first concern that I'd like to share with you is please, you've done a wonderful job uh, supporting your elementary school. Don't leave us. We want to see you. We encourage you to be around. We encourage you to give us a call. Uh, I love every kind of email. I appreciate, hey, any question you want to ask, I promise I'll get you an answer. Uh, might not always be the answer you want, but I promise to give you an answer. Please. You have access to Genesis, as Ms. Citarella said, as a parent, we check Genesis weekly. I encourage you, when you get that access, look at your son or daughter's grades weekly. Have a conversation with them. If their grade is going up, celebrate with them. If it's going down, ask them some challenging questions as to why. Doesn't mean come down on them, maybe a test was hard. Sometimes that happens. But ask them those questions, be involved with those questions. Now for my hardest thing. Many of you have chosen to give your son or daughter a cell phone. I've told my son he will not get one until he's out of my house. <laughs> I'm serious. Because I've seen some of the drama that it can cause. So please, here is my concern. If you have to, and I know some of you work and you need to have your son or daughter be connected, I understand that, please be in their business. It is not their phone, it is your phone that you have given to them on loan. Yes. So please check their cell phone at least weekly, if not daily. Any new app should be only approved by you. Any text messages <coughs> should be read by you. Any language used, ask them what it means, please. Yeah. I'm done with my soapbox. <laughs> list of activities and clubs for them to become involved next year, uh, <laughs> learning to meet other students from the other elementary schools. This is a great way to do it. Um, you can see the list here for stage band. The tryouts are required for that. Um, we have a phenomenal musical production here. Last year it was Danny Jr. This year it's going to be The Wizard of Oz. If you can come and make it up for that, it would be great to see um, that in advance. Uh, Peacemakers Club as well. We have the Science Bowl, Bowling Club, um, Fitness Club, and this year, intramural sports, flag football in the fall, and we're doing street hockey right now. So there's plenty of opportunities for them to get involved. This is the first chance that they will have to compete in interscholastic sports, where we are, where they 
compete against other schools. This is the beginning of that interscholastic competition, and if your child is into the athletics, that will take them from now through high school. Um, we offer, for the fall sports, soccer for boys and girls, field hockey, cheerleading, and cross country. In winter, we have basketball. How many did we have try out for basketball about this year? Uh, about 60. About 60, and we kept about 12, 13. Yeah. So that is a tough team to make, but we do usually have a sixth grader. We or two make grader. that team. <laughs> this year we had two. Um, wrestling and cheerleading. And in the spring right now, those sports are just getting out on the field for baseball, softball, and track. We added a very important side piece into this slide a few years ago. This is incredibly important if you have a child that wants to participate in athletics here. Make an appointment soon for after July 1st for a physical. Um, if, very, if you get that physical done after July 1st, that fall paperwork can be turned in. That physical is good for one calendar year. So if you have a child that wants to play soccer, try out for basketball, cross country, and then something in the spring, that, co that physical covers them for the whole year. Only thing they have to do is change a couple of pages within that physical. So Mr. Fire has a nice strategy, and I'm gonna talk about that real quick. And I've learned by experience Insurance will only let you get a physical whenever they say it's now time for you to get a physical. So if for some reason, in a perfect world, you're getting it somewhere between July 1st and September 1st, in a perfect world, because then that physical carries them through every single sport that they would want. If for some reason, like my son, his physical was good until December 1st, he was eligible for those fall sports. He is now doing track. We had to get a brand new physical for him to be eligible for track. Please, my doctor jammed me up with this, the eye screening has to be done no matter if your child wears glasses, is, has corrected vision, they have to enter something into that spot or else the nurse will say, you need to do this over. Please don't get jammed up, do the best you can to make sure the form is filled out correctly. If you have questions along the way during the summer, I'm here all summer. Would love to chat with you about sports forms. Love to help you out as much as I can. But Mr. Bonner, you want to give that advice or? You can you talk about the photocopy. The photocopy. Yes, yes. That's, your, that's yours. When you get the completed packet, make a copy. Make a copy. That way, in case you might think your son is only going to do uh, cross country. But then as the year goes on, he changes his mind. He wants to go out for baseball. And if you did throw out that whole packet, well, now you're redoing things. It's a lot easier just to say, I have a copy. You can refer to it as a reference throughout the years. So it's just a whole lot easier. And I'll be honest, sometimes people make mistakes. Items get lost. They get misplaced. We have a lot of sports physicals that come in. I would hate for your original to get lost without you having a replacement. So just go ahead. I've learned through experience. Make a copy. That way you have it for yourself. Let's talk about some transportation differences. They will, your child will receive a bus pass to low, let them know what number they're going to ride next year. How many, by a show of hands, how many parents are here from Lure? How about Parkway? And Antile? Okay. So the number of buses are at Antile and, and Lure are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 13 buses that come to that school daily. And with Parkway, it's only a couple, two or three. Here, there is approximately 24 to 26 buses that come daily. And all, safe, all shapes and size buses come here, too. And that, that line of buses starts all the way back there by the softball field, and it ends at Lower Ferry Road. So that, for when a student comes in here, that can be a pretty daunting thing to see, where is my bus? I'm scared, I'm not gonna make it home, I'm gonna miss it. We have a wonderful system. When they walk outside, they see a list of buses lined up on a board and they know exactly what order they are in. We have one in the front main lobby and one in the back by the sixth grade lobby. So, I've been doing this for a long time. I can't remember six, and hardly any more than maybe one or two sixth graders missing their bus on the first day out of 300. 
because we are always showing them where the buses are. And um, we also have a late bus program here for staying after clubs, activities, and that bus comes at 415. That's only for clubs, it's not for sports. We also offer this bus. We have a student of the month program here, which teachers get together each month and nominate one boy and one girl for each team. They receive a beautiful plaque and an invitation to an end of the year social party for all the students of the month. Honorable. So this is part as the deans. We are typically associated with working with discipline, but our bosses give us an opportunity to work with your children, our students, in different capacities. Um, the Ewing Public Education Foundation is the um, organization that sponsors quite a few grants within the school district. And they help us publicly recognize our students who are doing well. So each marking period, we have this grant called Smart Kids Rule in Ewing. And that grant gives us an opportunity to recognize our honor students, our good citizens, and also the parents and the families of those individuals. Marking period, your child will be recognized at an assembly, a guest speaker, special presentations, special prizes, all thanks to the Credit Union of New Jersey, who is the direct financial link to this particular grant. <coughs> Soar. Soar. Say soar. 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 Safety, ownership, achievement, respect. Those are the four basic rules in this building. If your child soars above and beyond, they will have a successful year. Our whole purpose of SOAR is a positive behavior support program. We want to focus more on the positive things. So if I see your child walking down the hallway safely, I'll say thank you for walking safely, pull out a SOAR buck, hand it to your child. That is our positive behavior support program. Now those SOAR bucks, you can't go out there and spend them in the real world, but they are worth a lot here. And some of the ways we go about recognizing that is every week we have our at least monthly, we have a sore raffle. So when your children are earning those sore bucks within the classrooms by being safe, taking ownership of the actions, um, achieving in their classes, being respectful, they earn those sore bucks, they can en enter them into the raffle. Last week, they gave away a PS4 wireless controller, again, sponsored by our grant. This week, or the week prior, the Thursday prior to us leaving for spring break, there is a um, variety of raffles that they'll be able to get. Um, Aquarium, Sky Zone, I Play America. Again, things that have either been donated or sponsored by our brain. We have, as Mr. Bonner mentioned, SOAR Wednesdays. They can buy SOAR tickets to participate in special activities during their lunch period. Again, we are focusing on having our students soar above and beyond, recognizing the positive ready to wrap up here. The Ewing website, um, I would, once the presentation is done, I will at least put that up so that you can see what the Fisher, the Ewing website looks like as well as us, what the daily homework page looks like, <coughs> virtual backpack, all of that. It is part of the green initiative going, virtual backpack, the headline, the school calendar's there, the homework center's there, the daily bulletin. Um, the daily bulletin, really, I, I can probably say our daily bulletin is five to six pages a night. There's only about one page that I read to the students. The other five pages are a lot of information for parents, things that might be going on, the school menu, and things along those lines as well. So uh, that is where that comes in. Instant alert, I know you guys are all used to and ready for that because you're using it for your elementary schools. Please, if you change a phone number, if you move somewhere even within the district, one cell phone's gone, another, change it, all right? I personally, as the building principal, I really only use instant alert for an emergency. I do not use it for daily communication. I would much rather use the homework pages where there's a note section on it, my website with headlines or the virtual backpack. All right, there's enough going on in the day that you, as soon as you see 538-9800, there's a little bit of a panic that goes on, all right? There's no need to panic to sit there and tell you that you know the pasta dinner is tonight, you know, things along those lines, whatever. So I personally, as building principal, don't use it for those types of things. But one of the things we will use it for um, is, as Mr. Bonner said, we do have 24 buses that come here. Sometimes those buses break down. Sometimes those buses get held up from a high school run. So we will, but here's the difference. My secretaries sit there and they put in groups 
So bus one, only the kids on bus one are in that group. So if all of a sudden today bus one broke down and they're going to be late, the instant alert is only going to bus one people. It is not going to 900 people to say bus one is going to be late and then you sit there, is my kid on bus one? <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you're getting it that bus one is late, then yes, your kid's on bus one. Okay, and know that it's running late. So that is one of the places that we use it. Um, not used for running late. This, the whole reason we put this up here is because the attendance policy is much different from the elementary level to the middle school, high school level. All right, right now, if your child is homesick at elementary, you can put it on your little note paper there and send them in with a note and say, Johnny was out sick today. And that is considered an excused absence at the elementary level. That note, while we want it at the middle school, it's not an excused absence. It is just notification that we know, you know your kid was home, okay? The only thing that is getting an excused absence from us is a doctor or dentist note, of course, the funeral or anything along those lines, of course, but we are asking you to call into that extension, and this whole presentation will be on the website that I'm going to show you, so don't worry about writing numbers down and doing things along those lines. All right? But we do have a, a secretary that is in charge of attendance. Call in, say that Johnny might not make it today, he's not feeling well, et cetera. That's wonderful. We know you won't get an instant alert for your kid being absent that day, but it doesn't make it authorized. And the difference between authorized and unauthorized at the middle school or the secondary level, I should say, because this is also at the high school level, they are only allowed 16 absences unauthorized before they lose credit for the class and will have to be detained. Again, 16 unauthorized absences. That would only be eight for those semester classes that Mr. Dwyer talked about. If they went to the doctors, and the whole reason with the 16 is we understand you're not taking your child to the doctor for every little sniffle all right, that is occurring. All right? That gives you some of that leeway for some of those absences to be unauthorized because you know that I really just shouldn't send him. In the past, if he had this little bit of a cold, I know it's going to be worse if I don't keep him home. So you kept him home. So that's one unauthorized absence. No big deal. It's when they start to get the two or three days in a row that maybe, you know, doctor's note, et cetera, needs to be coming because it will make a difference in their grades, all right? Same thing with tardies. Ms. Freeman talked about what time they need to be here. You could have dropped them off at 824 and said, well, you're here before 825. If they're not in their seat, by the time I am picking up that microphone <coughs> and saying, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, they're late, all right? And tardies then also have an effect on that first period. Again, this will be up there, so don't worry about copying or how to contact the school. All right. Fisher Parent Association, uh, as Mr. Dwyer said, please remain active. And I do have a little <coughs> push right here, right now. Ms. Beck, please raise your hands. Ms. Beck, right there. Upcoming, we have our FPA, Fisher Parent Association. It's not a PTO, it's a parent association. And we are having our pasta dinner, and there will be uh, Ms. Beck has coupons for $1 off for the pasta dinner. It is a great way uh, to come and get to already have your children into the building. Um, Mr. I don't know, either Mr. Silpino, Ms. Horn, some of our music students have some music playing on in the background. It's a wonderful meal. Um, wonderful. Ms. Beck, you want to add something real quick or I got it all? I got it all. All right. So they lend manpower. They're looking to coordinate fundraising. They have monthly meetings and things along those lines. Things to remember. Team letters are going to be mailed at some point in August. Max, Max, your child will probably be like, I need to know, am I on Discovery, am I on Endeavor? Am I on Discovery, am I on Endeavor? You're going to be tired of hearing it. They will be mailed near the end of August. I cannot stress this second bullet enough. All right, as Dr. Shibashi just put her hands in, her head in her hand and knows exactly what I'm talking about. And it seems ridiculous that I have to stand up here to do this. But please, 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 if your child is going to be 11 prior to them starting school, there needs to be an immunization record for those two lovely things, TDAP and Minotra. If they do not have them come day one of school, you 
you are getting a phone call, please come pick them up. We are not allowed by law to have them as 11 year olds in this building without those immunization records. By law, we are not allowed to have them in this building without those immunization records. Now you sit here, and being that you're the people that are here, most likely this isn't going to be an issue. Get the word out, <laughs> all right? And I'm not kidding. Each year, it has gotten better, but the first year this was mandated, which was I think four years ago, out of 300 sixth graders, 150 plus went home the first day of school. 150 plus went home the first. That's not the first day of school that a child should have. Right? If they're going to be 11 in September, October, what you need to have is proof that you have an appointment coming and that will be good enough. Even if they are 11 and because of insurance, you can't get them there until September 5th, get a photocopy of your appointment card that says you're going on September 5th and that goes to the nurse your child can be with. It's the immunization itself or proof of an appointment. Someone had a hand up, sir. Yes, you answered our question. Thank you. Well, we get like a package with all the different things that you need to bring. And do our like all our kids have their, I guess, physical at the elementary? Nurses' records come over. Yes, the health card comes with the child. All right, that is our nurse will have all of that. Health cards travel with the child through the district, so that's not an issue. This issue is because this is an 11-year-old. Uh, it's specific to 11-year-olds. All right, so that's that's what that is. All right, this will always be up. So any information we do at the end of the year, ask the um, fifth grade in the report cards to put notice of some of the things that are needed as reminders. So you should be getting some things towards the end of the year as that goes along, okay? Um, fall sports we already talked about, and your child's gonna have a great year because you're middle school, all right? So that should go without say. Now, just real quick, just so that you have an idea, all right, here is our Fisher Middle School page, and as you scroll down, I will say, some people say, it's forever, I can't find the school or whatever. If you bring up this page at home and you don't see anything that says choose a school, see how in the red now there's nothing there? Don't freak and say something's wrong, all right? Just go to this little, making it big little, and voila, look what's there. You get to choose your school, but you're anti whatever it may be, so we're here at Fisher. <coughs> And as you scroll down, you certainly see all of, you can click on these headlines. Um, some are district-wide, even though this is our page, we're helping out the elementary schools by advertising the kindergarten registration, you know, things along those lines. All of the <coughs> items on the left, of course, you can click on. So here's our homework center. And each team is listed there. See that we have the special areas for French, Spanish, special class program, English language learner, the OBA school across the way, and all you do, you know your child is. Now last year I did this and I forgot to upload the homework. Let's hope I. I don't know what to do. Dun, da, da, da. Yes. So you will sit there and see. So this would be the discovery homework. <coughs> All right, again, another place that we are giving information right here in the middle, anything that is going on. Um, and then it is a matter of, there's Ms. Canzanella with science, there's what her homework is. There is, there's two different math, three different math teachers, you have to know your math teacher to know which homework is. You know what this serves as great purposes? <laughs> Let your son or daughter walk in, you come in from work at like five o'clock, Okay, let me see homework sheet four. Huh? What? What are you talking about? They think you don't know. All right? You do know. A lot of times, this isn't for the kids, to be honest with you. They're using the agenda, as Ms. Citarella told you. This page is really for you. All right? 
not to catch him, I'm teasing about that or whatever, though some of you may appreciate or want to do that, but it's also for a way for you to make sure, and as Ms. Cinderella said, guidance-wise, to make sure you're keeping up with them, make sure they know. Maybe they did have a band lesson that day. Oh, Mom, I forgot, I ran out of class, I had band, and I didn't write the homework, the teacher didn't have the homework up yet. Okay, well, we can go right to the website and find out what the homework is and still get it done. All right, so there shouldn't be any excuse for them not knowing um, what the homework is. And as you can see, you know, there we go. I cannot thank you enough, all of us, for coming tonight. And as we said, um, you know, your children will come in May. So some of this you're already ahead of the game. A lot of times, sometimes we've had the kids first and you second. Um, so now we've kind of got a little bit in reverse. If any of you would like to just take a quick tour, and it's not of the whole building, it's really for you just to kind of get the feel of where your children will be for six, seven hours a day. Um, we will certainly, we'll meet you out there in the lobby and be able to, you know, take you through that sixth grade wing, where the cafeterias are, where the gyms are, uh, and just point a few other things out. But there's no need to have to take a tour of the, you know, whole building along those realms. Um, again, this will be posted uh, definitely off our website that I've just showed you there. It'll, it'll say fifth grade uh, parent orientation, so you can always go through. The information will be there. Some of the phone numbers will be there that are important reminders. And we uh, are looking forward to you being, as you already are, part of the Fisher family at this point in time. So thank you very much. And if you want a tour, we'll take care of you out in the lobby.